Okay, for one segment, we have Darwin Bedeker. And while the gun show was still going on, what is it, two Sundays ago now, two Sundays and four days ago, uh, a good caller called in and told me that they had made them put up these signs saying you can't have private sales of firearms. And we read on air the law that private sales are legal all over the country, but a few states where they passed unconstitutional laws. We still haven't found out how they ran the Saxon off, but we know they did run it off. They thought Darwin Bedeker at the Austin Gun Show was the old group they'd run off. So we know that. And we just simply wanted to investigate and find out who was who, who the bad guys are, who the good guys are. And uh, to set the record straight, and I believe Darwin, he's on the inside of this, uh, this uh, uh, p former police officer uh, who was the head of the events center had nothing to do and actually did defend in the meeting and elsewhere and was not playing good cop, bad cop. Give us his name again to remind us. Kill. They didn't have you up yet. Uh, say it again. It's uh, Andrew Burkell. Burkell, that's right. And so and so he really did try to keep the gun show where it had been for almost two decades. Exactly. Yeah, he, he definitely fought for us inside the meeting. Well, that's good. Um, now, uh, moving on from there, we have the good news. We have the good news. Uh, it was a great success. I'd say 80% of the folks came out to the demonstration with several other groups there. I don't get permits for protests in Austin because you don't need permits, and that sets a very bad precedent. But there were several other groups out there. But it, overall, it was very, very, very uh, uh, successful rally. I'd say over 300 people there total. Uh, front page of the Statesman. I didn't see it, but I was told by family. Uh, and... Uh, there's now a state investigation going on. Governor Rick Perry says he's looking into it. Overall, Darwin, I think this has been a pretty good uh, success fighting back against these people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we definitely got the word out and uh, created a lot of buzz. And for, you know, I let a lot of people that didn't know what was going on uh, see how their, how their inside government is working and treating them. So overall, it was a great success. Absolutely. And we have some more good news. Um, you got news yesterday and called us that you were able to get another good center uh, where you'd previously had some gun shows before they ran off the Saxon, this time in South Austin, and coming up next month, it is on. Yes, sir. Uh, February 20th and 21st, the third weekend of February, we'll be back at the Target building, which is uh, exit 228, William Cannon off of IH-35. It was the old Super Target building. Now, I want everybody to come out to this to make sure that they don't, because financially, as you said, you only run two shows, was devastating, but you have gotten quite a bit of support now uh, and small donations uh, at uh, the thetexasgunshow.net. But we need to ensure that there is a gun show in Central Texas now that they've uh, harassed HEB. Are you worried about them harassing the owners of the uh, Target Center uh, but as the governor said, if this happens again, it is definitely harassment and racketeering. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not afraid of it happening on this one because, I mean, we we got him on tape saying, you know, if it if it happens again, it's definitely it's definitely uh, racketeering in what you said. So no, I'm not. I'm not worried about them coming over there and making a big stink at, at the next show because they know over there the person that decides what goes on is me. So they know they're barking up the wrong tree. They, they can't strong arm somebody into forcing us out like they did last time. I think it's smart to do what a lot of other gun shows have done, and you may have already been doing this, but just have a one-page printout sheet for private sellers who have it on their back or on a table that, without the government involved, that's fine, uh, but ask for a Texas ID and ask them if they're a felon. But it turns out that I met the fella at the uh, demonstration. He seemed like a good guy. I mean, he seemed genuine in what he was saying. And this is what witnesses told me separately, that they kept sending illegals up to him saying, I don't have a driver's license, sell me a gun. And he said no, even though he legally could, under private seller, uh, he was going the extra mile. And then they brought somebody in with a fake ID. Who, well, they said it was fake, took him outside, threatened to arrest him and said, don't you feel bad? And he said, no, I didn't do anything wrong. And they let him go. Then they told the media there had been an arrest. This was a hoax. Yeah, and they did it. They did it just so they could go back to HEB and, and say, see, even though it was a different promoter, nothing's changed. We still had an arrest in the parking lot. That's exactly why they did that on Saturday. I think the only unsolved mystery here, 
I mean, we know they ran Saxon out, who were great folks, been there since I was in high school and college. So we're talking 17, 18 years. I mean, I was in high school 18 years ago. Hard to believe I'm getting that old. <laughs> I've been out of high school as long as I was in, in school and since I was born. Uh, but uh, I'm getting to be an old dog now, 36 next week. But uh, Saxon, we've tried to contact them. They're a lot bigger. They probably just want to move on. But they need to defend the Second Amendment. And we need to, well, I mean, specifically, Darwin, they thought you were the Saxon. What did they say to you as the Saxon? Well, they, the reason they thought we were the Saxon is because uh, we filled in the same weekend, and they didn't, there was no There was no month that skipped where there wasn't a show in there. So when they invited us to the meeting, obviously they thought we were the Saxon. But when they started reading off all the different incidences that had happened, they all happened at the other show. And then that's when I told them, well, you're reading off something that doesn't even pertain to me. And they were like, what? You know, they didn't even realize that we were a different show altogether, which upset me. And then on the news, you know, I listened to one of the reports and it said, where, you know, uh, well, we were the gun show where all, all this stuff had happened, all these different incidences had happened, which wasn't true because we'd only been there three shows. But Darwin, it was far worse than that. And again, this isn't just about Texas or the Second Amendment or the Justice Department. Now, the news now admits basically called for this from the APD, so this is Obama. Uh, there's the issue of media lying and saying it's the law. You got to have paperwork. What's the big deal? Yeah, no, it, it it it's upsetting because they just basically make make rules as they go along, and they feel because that they believe it that it's true, and, and I mean you can't get farther from the truth. Well, I'm going to be down there both days, off and on. Uh, maybe we can even do a live broadcast from there Sunday, but uh, the issue is we're going to be there. You've authorized us to be inside uh, with cameras. Uh, I need to talk to you privately about Pro because you'll invite me there and I'll be there and there'll be a group showing up saying, get out of here, you're not supposed to be here, and they'll do another 